one. So in my segment, I just wanted to say I am flattered and honored that I was chosen to get to speak. If you are not a member of the MBA, please join. There, there is nobody in town like these group of people. And even if you don't own a business and you just want to make some new friends, come on over. We would love to have you. So in my segment, we're going to run through my program. I'm going to do who I am, what I do, the difference between recruiting and staffing. There is actually quite a difference. We're going to move into the process, what it is like getting into business with me, signing that direct hire agreement, the process, what it is like working with a recruiting agency. We're going to talk about salary, money, money, money. We're going to talk about unrealistic expectations. What do I mean by that? What is going on in this job market right now for clients and candidates? We're going to talk about job postings, my absolute favorite, the I don't need you, I can do it myself, which is my favorite. We're gonna move into the candidate search, setting up those calls, sourcing, weeding through our top candidates, going through, it, it's never a dull moment, there are no plans for this industry. Client communication, how important it is that everybody, me and the client work together to make sure we get the proper, the best talent for your company and we will close with getting that amazing offer letter. So are we ready? Yeah. Woo! Okay. My name is Vanessa Mangelo. I own a boutique recruiting agency called The Connection House. I am the matchmaker for your business. I love what I do. I find the best talent for your company. Have you ever heard that saying, one bad egg spoils the bunch? That is 100% correct. If you have bad eggs in your business, your sales are going to go down, your numbers are going to be all over the place, it's going to be an extremely toxic work environment. So my goal is to find you beautiful rock star unicorn eggs to get them working for your small business or your very large company. I have done everything from a crew chief for a water restoration company. I'm an automotive, I do service advisors for the automotive industry, I have done insurance companies, so you name it, I have done it. If you need a specific thing for your business, I am here to help you. So now let's talk about the difference between recruiting and staffing. They're both very different, there can be some confusion, so I am here to help with that. They're both great, they're different. Let's talk about staffing, 1099, contract can be temporary work. I'm gonna give you two examples of this. I'm gonna give you one example. Let's say there's a company in Cartersville. They have a job starting, today's Wednesday, job starts Friday, eight o'clock, it's a three week job. We need a couple of individuals that know how to operate a forklift. We need individuals in town that already have those certificates, they're ready to go. That company in Cartersville is going to call that staffing agency. They're gonna pick up the phone, hi, Company in Cartersville, we have a job starting. It's a three week job. The pay is such and such an hour. I need a couple of folks that can operate a forklift and have their certificates. Let me know. What is that staffing company going to do? They're going to have their database of everybody in the area that can operate a forklift with all their licenses. They're going to pick up the phone. Let's use John for an example. Hi, John. I'm, I see on your resume you can operate a forklift. We have a job that's coming up. Uh, it starts in two days. The pay is this an hour. Are you available? Perfect. We'll send you all the information. That is staffing. We are quickly staffing for the job for a contract position. Not to say it doesn't lead to full-time work. Let me give you another example. We have a company that's having a huge trade show out in Las Vegas in a couple of months. Let's use Kitchen and Bath Show. It's like the best show ever. Convention and trade show staffing. They're going to call that agency. Hi, we need a couple of girls. We might have them presenting. The pay is such and such per day. What do we got? We'll work out the plane tickets, hotel, staffing for a three-day show. Let's talk about recruiting. It goes a little different. Salary, direct hire, permanent position. I am searching for something specific. Let me give you an example. One of my insurance clients. Hi, Vanessa. I need a 10 to 15 year commercial lines insurance agent that's bringing a book of business. That does not take two days to find. 
We are searching. We are looking. I need to match them with that particular company. So that is recruiting. It does not take two, three days. Now, sometimes if something crazy happens and you just so happen to get somebody's resume that fits all of these specifications, wonderful. But it does not take two days. Sometimes it can take a couple of weeks for those larger in-depth positions. Sometimes it could take a couple of months. So that is the difference between recruiting and staffing. Moving on, how's everybody doing? <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the process. What it is like working with me signing that direct tie agreement. The first thing I want to do, I have to meet you in person. I love the phone. I need to meet you in person. I need to get to know you. I need to get to know the real you, how you are, how your company works. I need to see how all the employees are getting along with everyone because I am personality based. I'm matching personalities because we need to get these individuals to stay for a very long time. So what's the first thing we talk about? The salary. Talk about the money. So that brings me to my next point. Unrealistic expectations. Let's talk about the job market right now. I'm going to use the restaurant industry as a perfect example. Let's say there's a company, there's a restaurant around here, mom and pops, they're very successful. <coughs> They want a 10 to 15 year experienced cook. They don't want somebody young. They don't want somebody coming back from college. They don't want somebody from school. This is what they want. It's very specific. Okay, that's fine. They only have $14 an hour to pay this person. Things have changed. I get it. <clears throat> I understand. Things have changed. Here is the problem with that right now. I don't know if anyone has looked at what Chick-fil-A, Zaxby's, McDonald's. I have seen positions up to $21 an hour with benefits, with an opportunity to own your own Chick-fil-A, Zaxby's, or McDonald's one day. So I'm here and I have to Fill this gap right here. Vanessa, I don't have the money right now. How am I going to do this? What's my solution for that? I was at Marquee Monday a couple of weeks ago. They had three entrepreneurs up on the panel. All they were talking about was hiring the right people. And one of the individuals, one of the ladies, I think it was Elf on the Shelf, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was her, she said there were nights I didn't know in the beginning, I didn't know how I was going to pay my staff, but I knew they knew more than me. They had vision. They were going to be amazing. You have to figure it out. We have to get them to stay. So I always ask the client, I understand. Is it worth the extra $5 an hour? Because they're not going to stay with you. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Sometimes I get the pushback. I'm like, okay, we, let's do it your way. We're going to do it your way. What's going to happen is we're going to waste about a month because I'm going to pull in all these candidates and it's going to be everything that you don't want that you described to me that you don't want and they're going to leave. So I always ask the clients, is it worth the extra four or five dollars an hour? You have to be competitive. You have to be better than everybody else. Let me tell you what's, go side note, let me tell you what's going on with these candidates right now. They're getting dragged. They're going through five, six, seven interviews. They're hearing nothing. I have a friend that called me last week. She got ghosted by the recruiter on her third interview. They have lost hope. They have lost faith. They're always looking. They have a plan. They have, they have a plan. They're staying with you for two years and they're leaving because they're always looking for something better. So let's start up here so we can find the best talent. So that's what I mean for unrealistic expectations. I will give you one more example. I ended up, we ended up not working together. It was totally fine. We had a, we had a restaurant GM position. I'm a big foodie. I know, I know how, what these GMs make in these steakhouses in Buckhead. They are well over the six figures, the really good ones. So we needed a GM, 
Not only did they want a GM, they had an interesting list that they needed to be an expert in all of these other things besides being a GM. It was very, very, very interesting. This, this was going to be an interesting one to find. The salary, under, way under the six figures. Again, we can do it your way. We're going to pull in everybody that you don't want. So that's what I mean when I say unrealistic expectations. And I promise you, I'm all about efficiency and time. You pay them well, you treat them right, they will stay with you. I promise you. So we're in the middle of the contract, the direct high agreement. We're good. The salary is usually not an issue. Everybody's on the same page. Now we move to the, the job posting, my favorite. Get a lot, of, a lot of recruiters, recruiting agencies, staffing companies. Well, I don't need you. I can do it myself. I can, I, can, I can push my own ad on Indeed. It's free. I don't need you. That is absolutely right. You don't need me. What you need me for is what happens to you after the job posting. You are a busy business owner. Not only do you have to worry about your own employees right now, you have to worry about running your own business. So I have a question. What's going to happen to you when you push that posting out and you have probably right now 160 applicants <laughs> sitting in your email? You do need me. I will tell you why. It takes about three and a half minutes to go through somebody's resume. And, and that's like an eye scan. Three and a half minutes, okay, on average. I'm not a math expert, but if we have 150 to 175 applicants, you're basically giving yourself an extra seven to nine hours of work. And we're not even talking about phone calls. We're not even talking about meeting them in person. We're, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about just sweeping. Do you have time to do that? I don't think you do. That's why you hire somebody like the Connection House to do that for you. So it's what happens. Of course you could do it yourself, absolutely. It's what is happening after the job posting. Let somebody help you like myself. So moving on, we get everything sorted out. We get the salary good, we get the job posting, the client very workable, me and the client, the company, we could do it however you want. But I do ask, please do not send me a job description. Let me tell you what's going to happen. They're going to read it. When they get to the middle, eh, boring, boring. We need to be fun. We need to be efficient. If you send me something, I'm going to make it like this because that's my job to connect the dots and figure out the rest. And if, and if one more person opens up a job, would you like to work for the best company in the world? What are they going to do? They're gone. They're looking for the next job. So the posting is, is very important. We have to keep their attention span. These candidates, they, again, like what I said before, they don't have the patience. There's no attention span anymore. They're looking quickly. And the salary range, that's another thing. I always tell the clients, let's stop with the big ranges. Is it this much or is it this much? Let's be very direct. They're moving on. These candidates, they're, they're, they're different. It's a, it's a different land right now. So here we go, we're setting up, I, I push it out. So I always tell the client, okay, I'm going under the ground. You're gonna hear from me in a couple of weeks. I'm gonna get my people together, my top three to five. I'm gonna meet them. We're gonna put everything together for you. If you wanna meet them in person, I'm gonna get everything set up. You will not hear from me, don't worry. So I push the ad out, we let it marinate for a couple of days. Phone, boop, 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 going, going crazy. Phone, email, I'm, I've done this a couple of times, I'm used to this. So we're setting up calls. I'm going through everybody that interests me. And there's always a couple, that drives me nuts every time. If I posted a remote position, yes, it is remote, but I still need you 30 minutes outside the Atlanta area because I need you in the office once a week. Stop applying from California and Arizona if you don't have intentions to move. 
So again, I tell you this because you are the business owner. You don't have time for this. I'm doing all of this for you. You're not even going to hear about this. So we read, there's about 15%. And what does that show me? You did not read the posting. You do not follow the directions. You're probably not going to be a fit for me or my client. So we do, we do the weed outs. I find a couple people, you know, we're weeding through. It takes, you know, it takes a couple days. So now we're going to set up these calls. We're setting calls up. I'll talk to 50 people if I have to a day to find what I need. I don't care. This is what I do. Day's going to go great, right? What can go wrong? This is so easy, right? We have a 839, 930, 10, 1112. We have calls all day. It's going to go great. It's perfect. Well, the 930 son has the flu. She has to go pick him up from school. She's not available for the phone call. She wants the 10 o'clock spot. Well, guess what? The 10 o'clock spot is full because I'm talking to someone else. The 11 o'clock messed up the job description and she thought it was an interview with another recruiter. And the noon actually asked if I can call them back in 30 minutes because it was an inconvenience for their time right now. <laughs> so, so that's my day of calls. This is what it's like being a recruiter, having a company. The day never goes as planned. The day, ne the day never goes as planned. But it's OK, though. I'm here for it. So we eventually get through all these calls. We, we, find, we find everything we need. And this is going to bring me to my next point. Client communication. I screened everybody on the phone. I really like them. I like. I have a couple of selections. Are you answering my text messages? Are you answering my emails? Are you answering my phone calls? I'm going to tell you why. I have another perfect story for you. The candidates, they're moving on. You're not the only movie playing in town. They are look. They probably have 15 interviews set up. They're motivated. They're feeling discouraged. They're motivated and discouraged at the same time. They're getting, they're, they're ready to move. So I'm going to give you an example of what happened. I found for a particular position, perfect candidate. This, this, this person could have just fallen from the sky. Just boop. I said, oh my gosh, I'm so, you know, sales experience, personality for days, had the book of business, incredible. It was remote, lived in Alabama, so obviously I did not mirror. Perfect. I was so excited. Got the package ready, sent to the client, email. Resume, I emailed, I got her, we need to move quick, someone's going to grab her, we need to set up a Zoom. Four days goes by. Four days goes by. So when they get around to it, oh yeah, that's great, Vanessa, that, oh my gosh, we're so excited. Let's set up a Zoom. There is no Zoom. Would you like to know why? Because she's gone. She took a position with somebody else two days ago over. So now we have to go back to the book, but I always have backups for the backups. So the, me and the company, me and the client, we all, we have to work to get to make this flow very nicely. So if I don't hear something in 24 to 48 hours, they're moving on. They're moving on. Just like the, just like the housing market right now, the good ones go fast. <laughs> Okay, and I literally have that on my index cards. They go fast. Okay, so we, we can do this a little differently with the client, and that's, that this brings me back to my communication. So it's a lot of moving parts here. So the, we can do it with the company however you want. I say, talk to them on the phone. I want to see them in person. Would you like to speak to them on the phone first, and then I go meet them in person, or vice versa? Some clients, they don't. They just want to talk to them on the phone, and then I'll go meet them. So we could do this however you want. But usually if it's somebody in the area and that client needs somebody to, you know, attend networking events and have a nice personality, I need to kind of see what you're working with in person here. So usually we'll meet at, a, at my office or a Starbucks. Totally fine. So everything goes, in, everything goes in stages. That's why with the difference between recruiting and staffing, it's a journey. It takes, it takes time to really find that correct talent. So I'll have my top three to five people. We're meeting them. We're setting up in person. So I want to meet them. I want to hear about them, hear about their life. 
And this is going to bring me to my next point. Let's talk about 2020, because this is very important. Nobody knew what the heck happened. Nobody knew. I'm still, to this day, I'm like, can you believe that? Career changes were happening. People were pivoting. Everybody, if you were fortunate enough to stay at your job or company, congratulations, that's amazing. I try not to pass judgment on a candidate that had four different jobs from 2020, even sometimes, to 2022. We don't know what happened to these people. People moved across the country. We don't, we don't know. Career, people were reinventing themselves with new careers. So again, as the business owner and client, don't worry about that. I got it. It is my job to figure out what happened. And a lot of um, feedback that I do get, a lot of companies got acquired. So I'll have a lot of candidates that they've been at places for seven, eight, nine years. They'll get acquired. They don't like the new, the new structure. They're not feeling the new coworkers. It's, it, you know, a lot, a lot of things are happening right now. So that's, I do not pass judgment on 2020. So we get them in front of the client. We, we're getting all the way to an offer letter, okay? It's done, right, Vanessa? We're done. We did it. We're done. No, we're not done. I have had one instance that this happens. Had an amazing candidate, went all the way to the offer letter. We're good. I sent it out, emailed it out. Ghost. Gone. This happens sometimes. Disappearing. No idea. This brings me to my next point. People are people. We're in the people business. This is the people business. You're the people business. We cannot control what people do. You cannot expect somebody to act like you act. How do I remedy this issue? Backups for the backups. Always, that's why I'll talk to a hundred folks if I have to. I'll talk to a hundred candidates if I have to. Always have backups for the backups. Things can fall apart at offer letter, okay? So that has only happened one time. So we get to the offer letter. They sign, they start, they onboard. Now we have to get them to stay. And I can't wait to hear Danielle. <laughs> what kind of business owner are you? What kind of company do you have? Are you fun? Do you do fun things? Do you have cool incentives? Are you making these candidates feel like they're a part of something? Because I promise you, they're gonna go find the fun somewhere else. So, so in closing, what I do have to say, I really, I'm, I'm glad I got to speak today because I really wanted to, you know, tell everyone, I know during now we only have 60 seconds, but really what it is like sourcing, finding these people. It's not just looking on a resume and, and it, it, it's different now. We're looking for long lasting, really good employees. And listen, sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes we have to let people go in two, three weeks. That's fine. That's why we have a guarantee clause in my contract. We'll, we'll, we'll get another one in there. It's okay. But most of the time, everything should work out smooth. But that's why it's very important as a company or a business owner, please let me help you. And people ask me, Vanessa, you're absolutely insane. Why do you do this? You're crazy. Everybody deserves a chance. Everybody deserves a good job that they actually like. So in closing, I am going to bring up one of my favorites. We've done a couple of placements together, Badge Love and Good. She's, she owns Bird Insurance Agency. She's the perfect example of an extremely busy, busy business owner that didn't have time to do everything I said. So I, I'm bringing up a real live testimonial just to, so she, you can hear from the client. What I said. So, Thank you so much. We're on Instagram, the connection underscore house. We're on Facebook. Thank you so much. And again, I'm honored to just be in the room with probably some of the best people I've ever met in my life. So thank you very much. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, first off, Vanessa is awesome to work with. She does save you a lot of time. I am a business case myself. I have two locations. I don't have seven or eight hours a week. So 
interview people and, and weed them out. Um, the best thing that I think, or one of the best things that she did for me is when we first met, she interviewed me to try to figure out what kind of a business owner am I? And what am I going to do with my employees and what can I offer them? And she, what was, I, I love the way you said it. She kept saying, give me more sprinkles, give me more sprinkles. <laughs> Things that are going to look, you know, appealing on that donut to someone. And, um, and I think I did. And you she did. did a great job. I mean, Stacy is awesome. She's a rock star. She's brand new to the insurance industry. But Vanessa matched our personality as well as her skills and my skills. And so I expect her to be there forever. She will. Yeah, she will. She might buy it. She might buy it. That's my goal to sell it one day, so that'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.